8.55 Eastern Daylight Time. And Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. Hitler added another to his bag of small nations today, the fifth in 14 months, when the Dutch army laid down its arms everywhere except in the extreme southwestern part of the country. And even there, the Germans have almost reached the sea. Earlier, the Germans had extended their breakthrough of the Dutch second line south of Amersfoort and were nearing Utrecht, while the armored column that had struck clear across the country yesterday was coming up against Rotterdam, which was being blasted by heavy air attacks. So General Winkelmann, the Dutch commander-in-chief, ordered the surrender of these two positions. A little later, he broadcast an order for general surrender, for he said, I quote, If we had fought on, not only our army would have been destroyed, but all civilians, women and children, because in such a populated country it is impossible to avoid killing civilians when bombing is aimed at military objectives. End quote. It is emphasized, however, that the Dutch government has not made peace or asked for it. Many Dutch cities have suffered heavily from the German bombers, while much of downtown Rotterdam is said to have been wrecked by Dutch artillery blasting out parachute troops. The Germans claim their bombers sank two British cruisers and damaged two transports in Dutch waters today, and now they will have air bases within 150 miles of London. In Belgium, Germans who had turned the flank along the Dutch frontier struck down to the east of Turnhout and fought a heavy battle with British, French, and Belgian mechanized forces east of Louvain. This battle seems to have been indecisive, though both sides claim the advantage, and fighting is going on between the Haida and Dial rivers. Still another German flanking force struck straight southward behind the Belgian frontier defense positions, which apparently are still held, and joined the German forces that had pushed up through Luxembourg and southeastern Belgium. These troops this morning captured the French city of Sedan, but the French insist that attacks elsewhere, the heaviest at Longvy, have been repulsed and that their own troops have counterattacked. The German assaults say the French has only reached the outer fringes of the Maginot Line, which here, however, is not so strong as along the eastern border. In France, as in Belgium, the Germans are apparent, apparently trying to outflank the strongest defenses. Naturally, these victories caused jubilation in Germany, and Robert Ley, head of the Labor Front, wrote in a Berlin paper, I quote, We are firmly convinced that Hitler will soon bring Europe and the whole world to reason and thereby make Europe and the whole world happy. This mission was entrusted to him by God and nature, end quote. The German Air Force again seems to have been the principal factor in the day's victories, though the smaller Allied forces fought back hard. Not much was heard about parachute troops today, but Anthony Eden, the new British war minister, began organizing a local defense corps against expected parachute attacks on the British Isles. This force, to include anybody under 65 who can use a rifle, will be organized and uniformed. But a German broadcast tonight spoke of its members as civilian snipers and warned that Germany would apply to them the same measures that were used in Poland. Italy is still non-belligerent, but mobs continue to burn French and British flags and the newspapers are full of war talk. Neutral diplomats begin to feel that Mussolini may come in any time now. Hungary is massing troops along the Slovak border, but it is uncertain whether this is a forecast of general action in the Balkans or only another move in Hungary's private quarrel with the Slovaks. And from Norway comes the news that the Allies are closing in on Norway. In this country, stock and grain markets went tumbling, and in Washington there was a spreading realization that this country is none too well prepared for hemisphere defense. At the close of a day in which all Washington had been talking armaments, General Pershing issued this statement, I quote, In my opinion, the very life of this republic depends on the energy and determination with which our people undertake a task of placing the United States in a state of thorough preparation in both men and equipment. The time factor should be the dominant consideration. This country must within itself be prepared for whatever instant action is required for our security, end quote from General Pershing. In line with this emphasis on the time factor, it was proposed in Congress today that all naval construction be put on a three-shift basis. President Roosevelt will send a message to Congress today or tomorrow proposing new defense appropriations, which will probably be pretty heavy, and which, according to report, will largely be devoted to anti-tank and anti-aircraft guns. There is support in Congress for the creation of a joint committee of both houses on defense, and some demand that Congress remain in continuous session, but the President said today he thought that was unnecessary. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.